All right, students, this is a little tutorial. I wanted to show you guys um, just some of the things you can do when you create your card. I know some of you have already seen this, but others maybe you haven't or you want a refresher. Okay, so this is what your actual uh, digital card looks like. Remember, if you want to just draw your card, you have the option. All you have to do is fully draw your card and take pictures and upload it to Google Classroom. Okay, but for everybody who's doing it on this template or doing it digitally, Here's the layout. So the first slide is your directions. Let's go over those real quick. Um, this is the direction slide number one. Slide two is the cover of your card. Make sure you put together all the elements. There's basically three elements. You have lettering, pictures, and when I say design, I mean background to create an original card idea, okay? Slide three, which is down here, that's your cover. Slide three, that's your, the inside of your card. Slide three is the inside of your card. Make sure your message is original. If you use a quote, give credit to the person that created it. You also have to add a short message of your own if you use a quote. A quote. Remember, if you do an original me uh, message, you have to do at least four lines of your own. That's original writing. If you use a quote, you can copy and paste the quote, but do two lines of original writing, okay? And then if you forget, remember the guidelines are right here. You can just click this and it'll take you to this document. Right here, let me go over this real quick for anybody who has not seen it. Super quick though. Your card has to be original. If it already exists or uses characters that are trademark, you'll have to do it over. You can't do characters like Mickey Mouse, Hello Kitty, something like that. You cannot do. Remember, you're not writing a card to a person you know. You're writing a card that somebody would buy in a store. So imagine you're writing a card and that card's going to be in a store later and somebody's going to buy it. So don't address it to your mom or your uncle or somebody you know. That's not what I'm asking you to do. Okay. Thirdly, Anything that is inappropriate will have to be redone and it will be reported to the principal. They'll put something like sexual or something like that or a bad, you know, uh, a bad joke. If you're unsure, you can always ask me. OK, you never know. If it's not too bad, I might let you do it. Ask me. You have a shot. OK, let's go over the guidelines for the cover. So your cover needs to have a unique design, but it should be recognizable to the buyer what type of card that is. That means you can do the typical things. You can do like a Christmas tree on a Christmas card or the Easter bunny on an Easter card, something like that. But just make sure your design is unique. I'll show you a little bit more about that when we do the actual cover of the card. Your card should be vertical, not horizontal. So it should stand up like this on a table. It shouldn't be like this where it would fall down on a table. It has to be this way. Now, if you're doing the template, if you're doing this, it's already set up for you. Okay, it's already set up the correct way. But if you're drawing the card, do it this way, not that way. Follow the top third rule. Remember, if you cut your card into three parts, make sure that top part of the cover, which looks like this, this area right here, has your most interesting part of the cover. If you remember, when you look at it at the store, you can only see the top because they stack them behind each other. And so make sure that top is interesting. All right, avoid illustrating people who are too realistic. We don't want to use photos either. Stick to things that are characters. They're easier to use color with. Um, be careful not to use characters that are trademarked. Again, here's a good example. You can use a reindeer, but don't use Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, okay? Santa's okay. Santa's not trademarked. Santa you see everywhere. Easter Bunny's fine. Okay, let's go to the colors. Remember that 80% of greeting cards are purchased by women. Don't be afraid to use color, avoid too many dark colors, and try to limit your cards to four colors. Now, there's a couple exceptions here. If you're doing Halloween, it's okay to use dark colors because Halloween always happens at nighttime. We associate it with, you know, quote unquote, evil things or scary things. So if you're doing a Halloween card, dark would be okay. Um, if you're doing like something that has balloons and you wanna use multiple color balloons, then you can use more than four, four colors. But make sure you don't have a bunch of other colors on the card. Do your balloons and then have a few colors around it. If you're doing a rainbow on your card, same thing. Do the rainbow of your card, but then only do limit the rest of it to like a few colors. 
Uh, let's see the last rule for the cover of your card. Make sure the font you use match your the tone of your card or the emotion. So I give you I give you some examples here. This is funny writing, playful writing that could also go on a joke card or a funny card. Romantic could go with Valentine's Day, etc. Spooky would go with Halloween. Serious. Now this one could go with like say New Year's because people like to dress up. You could go with Father's Day because it's a little more serious. You could go with um, maybe a get well card. I mean, who knows? Um, and then elegance, a little more obvious. That can go with Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, a wedding card, something like that. Anniversary card. Here's another important thing to remember. Do not, you will get graded down for this. Do not have a card that's more than one thing. Don't have something funny in the front of your card and then like inspirational on the inside. That's not going to work. Okay. For writing the inside of the card. Okay. Writing the inside of the card. Here's some things you can do. You can use an original pun. A pun is like a one line joke that involves wordplay. All righty. So an example would be if you're doing an Easter card and you have a picture of the Easter bunny and it says some bunny loves you instead of somebody loves you. That's like a pun. You could put that on the front of the card and then have a message on the inside. Or that could be part of the message on the inside. You can do an original joke where the joke starts on the cover of the card and then you finish the joke on the inside and then you add a couple more lines. You can do that as well. You can do an original poem where it rhymes. Like something like celebrate this Mother's Day, mothers always find a way, you know, whatever. And then you finish it up like that. Um, an original message. Think of this like a poem that doesn't rhyme. You could just say, you know, have a great Mother's Day. Mothers do many things for us. You're writing it in a way that has style, but it doesn't rhyme. That's okay. It doesn't have to rhyme. So that's a way to write an original message. And the last way is a quote. Now, people think quotes are easy. Quotes are not easy. You have to, one, find a good quote. Two, you have to make sure you format it right. So look at this one for my example of a graduation card, okay? Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. That's from a guy named Henry Ford. Notice how it has quotation marks. Notice I have a dash and the person who said the quote and their name, okay? Notice how the name is also capitalized. So yes, you can use a quote perfectly fine. But if you use a quote, you still have to add your own original message, at least two lines after the quote. All right. So let's say you do a quote that's like three, three lines, then you have to have a space and then have a, another message of your own under it. So if I was doing this quote, I might write something like, you know, um, um, keep learning, keep staying young, happy graduation. I'll kind of piggyback off of the quote, add my own words, and then that's okay. By the way, you cannot use this quote because I already used it. Okay, let's go back to our card. Now that we have all the guidelines and I showed you everything. So number one, let me show you how to do a background. Two ways to do a background. You can do a picture of a pattern or you can do a color. So let's go to background. Let's choose an image. If you choose an image, you're going to want to use the word pattern because you don't want like a picture. You want a background that stays in the background. So go to Google image search, type the word background. And then let's look what you're looking for. Let's do Christmas. So background Christmas and then come down here. Don't, we don't want wallpaper. Put background Christmas. Click that. And then I'm going to show you an example that I've seen. Oh, I'm sorry, I wrote the wrong the wrong thing actually. You don't want these because this is too simple. You want pattern Christmas. Okay. If you do a background for Christmas like I did earlier, that's basically the whole card. And then if you copy and paste that, you're gonna get an automatic low score because you basically took a picture and put it. Let me show you what I mean. OK, if somebody is to do this. And then turn this in and say, this is my card, mister. This is not going to work because you actually didn't design anything. You just took a picture and put it on the card. That's not designing. OK, let's go back. Background, choose image, pattern, Christmas. 
And then let's pick, where's the one I like? Right here. Insert. Okay, so here's an example. You can use this in the background. Now you can add something to the front. Okay, so let's look at something that will stick out against a dark background. Now, this is a dark background. I told you we shouldn't use dark backgrounds, but it does have color. It has red and white, and the red and white stick out. Okay, plus we're going to put things that are um, lighter that stick out also. Now you can add a picture. You go in here to insert image, search the web. And the number one thing to remember when you search for images is use the word transparent. What it's going to do is it's going to give you um, it's going to give you mostly pictures without backgrounds. So put transparent snowman. Let's say I had planned. Let's say on my proposal I had said, "Oh, I'm going to do a Christmas card with a snowman." Well, now I'm going to make it happen, right? Let's say I like this guy right here. Click insert. Okay, perfect. Now he's too big. Let's make him small. Remember, if you, when you select the image and you get to these little four arrows, you can move it. Okay, so you can move him down here. And then you can put some other images. Remember, I'm just showing you very quickly what you can do. You can put some other images in the front. Make sure the images look like this image. They should be kind of in the same style as the image. Add to it, make it look nice. And then you could do some text. And I'm going to do a real quick version. Um, let's do a text box here. Now, it's hard to see sometimes with the background, so you just kind of have to know what you're typing. And then you can go back, highlight the words. We want them to be white. So we're gonna go to text color, make it white, make it larger. Okay, so this looks okay. This looks all right. But this doesn't really pop and stick out. So another way to do that would be, let me show you another way to do your text. Okay, let's get rid of this text box because I don't like the way this came out. And I'm gonna show you a technique that I think you should all use. Come here and instead of doing a regular text box, do word art, okay? So now we wanna say happy holidays. You can say whatever you want. You can say Merry Christmas, eh, let's do Merry Christmas. Merry. Now notice what it says up here. It says use enter to save, use shift plus enter for multiple lines. So I actually wanna do multiple lines here. So I'm gonna click shift and enter and then it's gonna click me down here. So now I'm gonna put Merry Christmas. I'm gonna put a little exclamation point. I'm gonna press enter now. Okay, now I'm gonna move this up and notice what the word art does. The word art puts the message in the whole box. It uses up more of the space. It's easier to size it now. Okay, so I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And now let's look, let's look at some of the features of this. So come up here to the little paintbrush. It says fill color, that's the inside. The inside of these letters is not even white. It's really like a real light gray. So come here, let's make it white. Now it sticks out a little more. Okay, let's go to this one right here. This is the border color. You can change the border of your letters. You can make it red. You can make it blue. I actually might maybe like the red, but I'm not sure. Let's try the red. Let's try it. And remember, you could switch it around. Um, now we can try a different font. Because remember, this font's kind of plain. Let's use something a little bit more, maybe happy. No, that's not bad. And notice how it's thicker letters. So now it sticks out more against the card. Merry Christmas, okay? 
So this is the very quick card. I don't think this card looks great. This is kind of just something I put together really fast to show you guys. Okay. Now let's change our background real quick. Let me show you something on the background. Okay. Um, come up here to background. Let's say I don't want to do an image. I want to do a color. Let me show you how to do a different color. So let me and let me show you another trick that I think works well. Come down here where it says custom and pick the color you want. Let's say you want to do it's Christmas. Let's say you want to do red, right? But a lot of reds are too bright. So you want to move this around till you get the perfect red. This one's a little too, I don't know, almost like burgundy. So you want it to be a little red, but maybe not super bright. So maybe you want to have it down here. Let's try this. Okay, so now you have a red card. So that's the two ways to do a background. The first way was to do a picture. The other way, what I just did was, sorry, background, color, and then you can either choose one of the pre-done colors, but I really recommend clicking custom, finding the color you want. If you want a blue, come here, and then pick the exact blue you want. It'll show you what it is up here. Using the custom feature gets you like a, the color you want every time, because it gives you almost virtually any color. Okay, now we don't want to really do blue. That was actually my fault. I want to do the red. Done. But now this looks kind of plain. Remember, I would add more stuff in the background. Maybe I would find like a Christmas tree for the snowman to be in front of, right? Make it look nice. Um, let's go back to those letters. Now, I don't, this looks a little bit plain, right? Because you have the red and the white letters. It sticks out, but it's still kind of plain. So now let's go back here and let's look at our border color. Maybe let's change it to green since Christmas is red and green. It's a little better. You can also come here and change the weight of the border or the thickness of the border. See, now that kind of sticks up and it ends up being a little more Christmassy. So if you do this, add this picture, add a couple more pictures, now you have like a, um, now you're getting somewhere and you have a, um, a pretty good card, okay? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other features to show you. That's basically it. Let me show you one last thing. Okay. Remember, this is our final project, so I want you guys to do a good job. I want you guys to also ask for help and get feedback. Let me show you two ways to do that. Let's say you do the cover of your card and you just want to ask me a question. You want to say, does this card look good? Or is this okay? Or what can I add to make it better? Or something like that. You can come up here. You all have a I'll have this assignment. You can come up here to the share button, okay? And it's already shared with me because I created it. But what you can do is you can come up here and type my name again, A, and it's, sorry, A dot Q U I. Where did I get that? Actually, let me go back. It's right here. My email's here. So if you just start typing that email in, I'll pop up a.qui, right? So if you just do a.qui, and I already have access to your document. But what this lets me uh, know is now you can write me a message. You can say, um, Mr. Q, can you look at my card? Tell me if I'm doing it right. Okay. Click send. Now it'll send me an email. When I get that email, it'll send me a link. I'll come back to this card and I can look at it and I can respond to you. Okay. Another way is to just add a comment. And I know you've done this in some of your classes. Okay. It doesn't really matter what you click. You can click any element. If you want me to look at the letters, you can click me what you want to look at. If you want to just say, hey, mister, do you like these letters? Or um, what can I do? Or any kind of question you can about the letters, you can click the letters. If you have a question about the picture, you can click the picture. If you have a question about the card in general, you can pick anything, it doesn't matter. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click it and you're going to right click and you're going to find this little button that says comment, okay? Now, you're going to have – see how it says comment to add others with an at? You're going to click at and then put a dot 
Q U I. It's going to show me again, but my name. That means it's going to send this comment to me, and then you can ask me the question like this: um, How can I improve these letters? The comment, and now I'll get an email. When I go to my email, it'll send me a link. I'll come to your comment. I'll see the comment on your assignment, and then I can respond to it. Okay. So remember, we only have about two weeks left. We have exactly two weeks left to the end of the semester, and we have less than that till all your work is due. Your work is due December 16th, which is a Wednesday for most of you, except for my period six, which is due the morning of December 17th, because that's when your final is. All righty. So. Ask me questions. Use the share feature. Find me. Send me. Um, uh, Reshare it with me and then ask me a question or use this. Send a comment to me. I will give you guys input and that will help you guys answer all your questions and you won't have to wait for class. Um, you just get your stuff done quicker. OK, that's all I have. If you have any questions, um, make sure you email me anytime. I'm pretty good at getting back to people. And remember, guys, this is our last project. I want you guys to do a good job. I want you to show me your creativity. Remember, you cannot do this card with these letters. This is going to disappear and self-destruct. OK. Don't take my ideas, but I showed you the techniques where you can find things from the Internet and come up with your ideas. OK, if you notice, I didn't do any drawing here. OK. I didn't do any drawing. I didn't have to display any artistic skill, but I still came up with a design for a card. OK, you can too, but please show some creativity. I'd rather you do your own work and do a pretty good job. Don't borrow anybody else's ideas and get a low grade. OK, that's all I have. Contact me if you have any questions and I will see you guys soon.